We are joined now by uh, Nationals Police Spokesperson Mark Mitchell. And Mark, I know you've been doing the absolute responsible thing. You have pulled over to the side of the road. You're not gone hands-free. <laughs> and that is very law-abiding of you. You're driving north, mate, up to Northam. Yeah, I am. I'm, yeah, no, I'm heading up to Kirikiri. I've got basically four days of events um, up north. So I was just, we were just pleased to see that we got away about 5 there this morning, that the Brindurans were open. They're still only open one way. Uh, but we are, we're making good progress, so we will get up. There. You're seeing a fair bit of uh, destruction uh, on that drive, though? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Brinduans, um, you know, State Highway 1, uh, there's still a lot of work to do there to sort of restore it, get both lanes open again. I mean, I know that we've been talking a lot about Hawke's Bay, and we should be because of what they're facing and what they've been through, but the people of Northland have also had a, a lot to contend with and deal with, and even in my own electorate, um, you know, we're still in recovery mode from the flooding that we've had. Yeah. Mark, I do want to talk, and I have been cautious in the way the platform has approached the crime wave or supposed gang crime wave, particularly in the Hawke's Bay, because, to be honest, I read it, and I read everything going on on social media, and I thought we were in danger of talking up something or a kind of collective hysteria, and I'm not saying that that isn't completely natural amongst a group of people who have been traumatised and are dealing with a disaster. I really want your honest opinion, Mark. Has there been a massive crime wave across Hawke's Bay, largely driven by gangs? Um, is it that bad? Well, I, I, I totally get the point um, that you're making and uh, wanting to come from a, a responsible sort of angle in terms of not pouring fuel onto a fire and making people feel even more fearful. But the reality of it is this, is that you've got people down there that are living through a state of emergency that have lost everything. Um, they already had a gang problem down there. Uh, they're very extremely fearful of the gangs down there. Um, there has been looting going on and there's been massive underreporting going on because they have had no communications. They haven't been able to report. Well, how do we know there's looting going on if they can't communicate? See, that was the logic I well, couldn't get. People said, oh, they haven't been able to report this to police, but they told me. Well, if they told you, the friend of a friend of a friend, why couldn't they tell the police? Well, it's not a friend of a friend of a friend. I was in a meeting um, in uh, Eskdale yesterday um, evening where 200 members of the communities that have been cut off and isolated and still right in the midst of a state of emergency um, that were standing up and sharing their stories. Of and what were their stories? They, well, that they have been subjected to looting. That they are fearful when, when lights come are up. Are they arrive. fearful or have they been subjected to looting? Because if you're cut off, to... Mark, I imagine the looters can't get in. Well, Sean, the, the, the reality is this, is that send one of your people down there onto the ground and go into the community and tell them that you're imagining it and it's not happening. And I'll be... I okay, okay. Surprised. Well, I wouldn't send anyone there, even if I had the capacity, because I think the last thing that people recovering from a disaster need is a bunch of sticky beak reporters going around getting in their way, Mark. But, but the, the last, the, the last thing they need is, is reporters um, diminishing and. No, I'm and not trying to diminish. Out. I'm trying to find the facts, Mark, and they're really hard to get. Well, then you're going to have to get on the ground. If yeah. You want the facts, okay. You the Look, the you're, other you're thing. You're not going to get them sitting. Well, yeah. Yeah. The other thing I'm hearing is that people want to feel safe and they don't feel safe. And I'm not going to say well, those feelings aren't, uh, aren't totally valid. And I guess I'll pick up on something you said earlier. There was already, and the government and police have failed to deal before Gabriel with the threat and the fear that Correct. gangs in the Hawke's Bay have caused. Correct. Um, so they've got a pre-existing gang problem that's got worse over the last three or four years. Um, these gangs, the Mongol Mob in particular, in the Bay, operate with impunity. Um, it's the, 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 the soft on crime Labor government and uh, and the commission has not helped. It's created a right. very permissive environment for them. So in, a, so in a state of emergency, it's been a situation where it, it's even more permissive. Yeah. And, and I know there has them. been a run, uh, places like Gun City, on weapons and ammunition. So locals and yeah, they go. So we're arming ourselves, um, and that can't well, be we, good. No one wants. To, no one wants to see that happen. Um, but the reality of it is, yes. In the meeting, it was very clear that people are going to defend their families and their property, um, and that's why when you went into a state of emergency seven days ago now, 
I was very clear and I said, you must put an overwhelming um, police presence and force them there. Go around the country and find your, your hardest streetwise police officers that aren't intimidated by gang members and, and, um, and put them into the area. Support their um, uh, checkpoint, support their patrols yeah. and make people feel safe. That's the number one fundamental. Right. A year ago today, uh, Mark, there were 700 extra police officers deployed to Wellington to get rid of some people camping on Parliament's lawn. Well, that's because they let it get out of control and they should have, there should have been action taken immediately. The minute structures went up on the um, forecourt, they should have come straight down. So, unfortunately, the police to be able to get on top of that situation and restore order, um, they needed numbers and they did the right thing. And by the way, I was down there and I was extremely proud of our police officers and the way they performed, bearing in mind that 40 of them ended up in hospital with, um, with serious injuries. Mm. So, Mark... <coughs> In the absence of having me having the capacity to go there myself and get in the way or send a reporter, there is, I'm not going to deny there is a climate of fear. There has been some looting. I think the Prime Minister's had to apologise to, for saying a weapon wasn't brandished at some workers, some road workers or some people on a checkpoint. And it appears the government is now setting up temporary police hubs and sending a few more people in. Have they finally, do you think, got the message, the government of the day? Well, they've definitely got the message. And I mean, um, I'm sorry, but when you put a, a, um, an area like that into a state of emergency, which, the, which was the right thing to do, the last thing you do is sit down for the Prime Minister to sit in his ivory tower in Wellington and start to discredit um, emergency road workers that were out there supporting their community and had um, the same mongrel mob that this government gave $2.7 million to yeah. stopping and pointing firearms at them. Yeah. Uh, that was a terrible um, decision by the Prime Minister. He should have stayed well away from that. Quite simply, his message should have been, these people are under a state of emergency. We completely understand the fear. We will respond and provide the support that we need. Mm. And any reports of any crime like that will be followed up and investigated properly. Yeah. Uh, Mark, I thank you very much indeed for your time. I thank you for your safe driving. And safe talking Thanks, on the Rick. phone. Um, and enjoy your yep. time in, in up north. Um, hope you yep. get back Thanks, safely too. It. Cheers. Mark Mitchell, Nationals Police Spokesperson. Okay. And I really have. I've been very cautious about... Uh, people's emotions are involved here and their feelings. But I think he made a really good point. Maybe if we dealt with the gangs... And I mean, I hate it when a police minister like Stu Nash says... I've talked to the leadership of the gangs. You don't negotiate with domestic terrorists, Mr Nash. Gangs are a bane and a blight on our communities. You don't treat them like they're the Rotary Club, because they aren't. And too long for generations in this country, we have pussy-footed around with these organised criminal um, gangs. And what you get when something goes wrong is people are already living fear in fear in the Hawke's Bay and it is exacerbated. Um, oh, thanks, Laura, but no thanks. Um, Sean, my new slogan is woke doesn't work because wokesters don't do much. They just say silly things. Plus, wokedom doesn't work for society. That is John. He's a he-me. I'm sure he did that with his uh, tongue in his cheek. Okay, um... As I say, I think the Hawke's Bay issue is problematic and I don't want to cause any more stress for people who are already stressed and doing it hard, but I need to see hard evidence before I say that's a fact. And Jesus, like Ian Wishart's thing, he found some hard evidence, but um, it's not... Um, that hard evidence uh, is being ignored by NIWA.